Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. This is a uh, different, more somber episode than usual, just because we're talking about something that recently happened. Um, yeah. So, to jump right into it, for the people from our channel that don't know, which could kind of be a toss up, we kind of we have inconsistent returning viewers. Like we have people that will come and like consistently come for a while and like a wave and then they'll disappear and then they'll come back and say, Oh, I've missed a bunch of your videos. And then they watch us again. And there's like a whole different group of people that come in between. So, um, but for those that don't know, YouTuber Paul Harold died, uh, when you're watching this two days ago for us, it was yesterday. Um, he had pancreatic cancer. He was just diagnosed last year. They thought that they had found it early. Um, but one of the reasons why we want to talk about this wasn't really about him being a YouTuber or the cancer or anything like that. It was the community support. And you didn't know about this. I just told you to watch the video earlier today. I'd never heard of him in my entire life. So I just learned about him. I might have seen something in passing. I don't remember. One of the big things with a lot of social media creators, content creators, YouTubers, whatever, is they're they're recognized between groups and channels based on like collaborations. Okay. So the only reason that I found out who he was, because I don't go searching out new YouTube content very often, if at Mm -hmm. all. Um, the way that I stumble upon new content is because content creators that I like have them on their show, podcast, whatever other. So who did he collab with? He hadn't, he hadn't that I saw, I should say, not that he hadn't entirely. Um, there was a wave end of December, early January when this really, like he brought it up, I think on his channel in around Christmas, maybe early January. And all of the gun tuber two a community and stuff on Twitter jumped on the fact that he was just short of a million subscribers at that time. Okay. And that was the push in January was, Hey, the last thing, if we don't do anything else good for him ever, let's get him a million subscribers. So he gets his gold play button from YouTube. Oh, and that's okay. how I found out who he was in January. Roughly. I think. Okay. Um, I hadn't seen to the best of my knowledge. And I mean, there's been times when I've seen content creators and YouTubers and I just, because I only saw them in passing or, Mm -hmm. you know, they weren't really a frequent character on somebody else's show, or maybe I missed that episode for whatever reason, because it wasn't appealing. Um, So I, I don't know if I had ever seen his content before, but then when I started looking at some of the thumbnails and the memes that people were passing around, I've definitely seen the memes and content that he's been in. There's a whole pop tart thing. Um, there's this okay, I'm going to circle back to that because, okay. or I'll just jump. I'll I'll Kanye you right now. Okay. So he had me watch this video while I was at the office, so, completely blind. I'd never heard of this person at all, and obviously, again, as he said, it's a very somber video. The video is. This has come out because I have passed. And well, he he did the movie style. Uh, you've already read my last will and testament. Now my family is going to release this video as like my final thing. Clearly right. he recorded it back right. around th- when he did my subscribers. Uh, oh, I think it was back in like late fall, it Christmas was, time, something like that. I don't it, know. There was, was like snow, snow there was snow on yeah. the ground. Yeah. He said, okay. if you're watching this, I'm dead. Right. So uh, Two comments from somebody who had never heard of him or anything. Who is Caleb? And why are Pop-Tarts part of the final update from the brother? Those were my two questions. (laughs) Who is Caleb? And why are Pop-Tarts part of the video? So he had the, the two guys at the end of the video, the one, the bigger guy that was in like... I guess a studio or something. He, he hinted that he, a brother. person, a person named Caleb had been trashing him. Uh, oh. Sorry, character assassination was 
the verbiage right. that he used. And he like oh, scoffed oh, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Caleb. I know you're talking about. I know you're so I want to know who is Caleb and why was Caleb out to destroy this person? There's and a guy that. Why were Pop Tarts part of. There's a guy the collectively final? that, to the best of my knowledge, nobody. Well, I guess, I mean, somebody has to like him because he has a lot of followers, but the people that I respect don't like him. So it might be the same person. I cannot. You can he's a super skinny. Google him right now. Is his name Caleb? I, don't, I know the guy that I'm thinking of doesn't. His YouTube channel, I believe, doesn't contain his name. Because I need so to know have to, who is Caleb and why were you out to get this poor man and why were Pop-Tarts part of the final, final will really and testament? He wasn't even really that old. He was 58. I mean. Uh, right. I, oh, I it, said poor man. I didn't say old man. I took the poor man, like it just, it sounds. No, he's already, he was at that time was already going through so much, had been diagnosed. He said that his hip had quite literally shattered from the cancer eating away at his bones. That happens happens both from cancer and to Who is Caleb, who clearly has no conscience. Okay, you don't need to scream and yell. Well, you jumped on me saying I said old. I wasn't. So I was like that. clarifying that I said poor man, as in I'm not he in, had I'm not logged into Twitter on here. Enough going on in his life while he was still alive that why were you out to get this guy? Um, I think Chad's one of those guys. Of course, their name would be Chad. Chad's. Oh, definitely heard Chad. Um, he. I know either him. Or uh, Kron posted recently. So that's, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to be the faster way of finding this guy because I don't, I can't think of his name. So I'm not going to be able to find him on YouTube by gotcha. typing skinny guy. What? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> there's going to be so many videos that that's going to return. I mean, I guess you could also do a search Caleb plus Paul Harrell and sure. see what comes up. Paul, Harold, Caleb. Um, oh, I'm searching in Shad's profiles. Like, why is it only coming up with his stuff? Paul, Harold, Shad's. So, but one of the, one of the things about that video, um, specifically, that I wanted to kind of highlight and point out was first of all, the fact that he recorded that some time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe he had the crutch too, right? Yeah, so it that, was in yeah, the video yeah. and he talked about it in the video and that's when he explained that his hip had shattered. So I'm pretty sure that happened in January, February. So that's, I don't know where he's from. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that's coming up, no matter what I type in, is one, that he's dead, or two, let's get him to a million. Those are the only two things that are coming up. Well, if you guys know who this Caleb guy is, I really want to know because I, I have the to internet, imagine, do your job. I have to imagine it's this. there's this really dweeby, goofy... Well, I sincerely hope that he's shut down all of his social media at this point because hopefully the million plus subscribers for this Paul Harrell have come after him. Yeah, I can't. I can't find it. Anyways, but so here's the picture. And I saw this picture originally when around when it came out because everybody was like, yeah, we got it. He got it. Who jumps out at you? And I'll, I'll show this to the screen. You guys aren't going to know who I'm talking about, but. Who does this look like immediately? This where he's holding his gold play button. You, it didn't immediately jump out of you. That looks like Ken. No. All right. Well, you see Ken everywhere. He, we were somewhere over the weekend. He was like, he looks like Ken. So that's the picture. He's got his, he's got his play button there. Um, he looks like the, um, Chief legal counsel for Warrior Rising. Wait, only only in that picture. When I saw the picture, I, I was like... strongly disagree. I think at this point you think that 
every man over the age of 55 looks like Ken because mm-hmm. I have, I believe only ever agreed with you one time and you see Ken everywhere and say it mm-hmm. at least three times a month. Okay, hey, keep, that guy looks like Ken. Keep a, keep a count then. This will be, this will be one because we don't have any evidence of the other ones. Keep, keep her on account and we'll see. Okay. Um, but most of his, most of his content that I have seen since then, because when they did that push, mm-hmm. I went and I had subscribed to him okay. and I had seen a little bit. And you knew the story? You knew why there was a push? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's, I had seen it on Twitter. People were saying, Hey, let's get him to a million. Let's get him to a million. Now he has 1.15 million. Okay. So jumped on that, followed mm-hmm. him or subscribed to him, whichever you want to call it. But he, or maybe I'm wrong. I thought it seemed like his content was kind of infrequent at the time, which makes sense. I mean, you're battling cancer. It's in the winter. Mm-hmm. You probably aren't going to be doing a lot. Oop, I did not mean to. I didn't. I clicked on a video. I was trying to do the side scrolling to like go through the videos. Mm-hmm. I had sorted them on my phone because out of curiosity, I wanted to see what his most popular videos were and um, what the view count was on mm-hmm. them. So his most popular video, assuming that this is sorted correctly, yeah, it is. Uh, his more popular video is Paul's Top 5 Guns for Home Defense. It's like 22 minute, 21 and change. And when did it come video. out? Eight years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's um, like an OG gun tuber. Uh, I wouldn't call him OG, but he's more OG than the majority of most guys. Like Matt Carricker has been around longer. Donut's been around longer. Okay. So he's kind of like in between. He, he got into it obviously on YouTube when that's not really what YouTube was doing. So he was part of the group that brought it up on YouTube Eight years ago, I don't think Matt Carricker was that huge. I mean. So I'm going to say again, he sounds like an OG gun tuber. Sure. I'm not saying no in a bad way. I'm just saying that I don't consider him part of that like core. Group. Probably because he's not of your age demographic and you were not his viewership. The people that so, I know that watch him are all my demographic. Every single one of them. I said age demographic. Yeah. This is all the people that were watching this were people my age. This was intended for people like me. I, I and, said you did not watch him because he was not of your age demographic. You I don't watch people, based people on their age. who are in their 30s and 40s. I don't I don't think I've ever seen you watch anybody in the 55 plus age range ever. I have several of them. Okay, name them right now. Um, there's uh, and tech, one is not several tech ingredients. Okay, what I is that? What is their age group? I don't know how old he is, but he's old, he's got to be older than him. He's like a college professor, older guy. Okay. Tech ingredients. Okay, sorry. I guess I should have specified of gun tube. That's what I was talking about. Gun tube. There aren't many or any others that I even know of. I'm sure there are plenty out there. No, because once again, like I said, that community, they collaborate with each other very frequently. Like Grand Thumb and Matt Carricker. But you also said in the beginning that you had never seen a collab with him. That's with any of the people that you follow. I said I, I might have, and it just might not have been something that either at that moment that I was interested. So things on YouTube... If they, if they, f- we'll, we'll say age out of your timeline, right? Like if I have to scroll more than a day back mm-hmm. and I missed it, I'm never going to see it more than likely. Right. You've said mm-hmm. this before. So there's a chance that I just didn't see it because I didn't see it. Are you going to watch him now? Huh? Are you going to watch him now? His content? Yeah. So his legacy lives on. 
Um, we'll see. I mean, I'll give it a chance. I'm sure they have probably a back catalog of some things that haven't been released yet that is going to come out either timely. Uh, he, he has stuff. It doesn't look like he really does this anymore, but he has like breakdowns of shootings from back in the day. There's a FBI Miami Dade shooting analysis. He from, said new content on his video that right. he put out. So right. I would assume his brother that and the, the editor and I believe somebody else were still going to put out content on the channel. But I'm assuming he probably has everybody. Everybody has cut content. We have cut content. Everybody has cut content. It typically never comes out because it doesn't. They don't want, ever want to lose viewership. They don't want to break their cadence. But now that it, it's like art at this point, right? Like people yeah. are going to be looking for his channel simply because he's in the news, and it's it's all over the news. It's it's breaking news like in the UK. People have been screenshotting and. I mean, if he's not a YouTuber, does it even break news in the UK? Probably not. If he was just somebody on on Twitter and had even that amount of followers or subscribers, I don't think anybody outside the US and people that follow him on Twitter are going to care. I think it's simply because of the YouTube pool. And these news agencies know, based on the number of people posting and tweeting about it, I think his viewership is going to double in a week. Maybe the I'm dead video already has more views than all, all but like two of his best videos ever. Well, I hope his legacy lives on and I hope you actually consume his content. I'm trying to, I thought I saw it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. For whatever reason, it's ranked behind Several of it has 2.1 million views so far, and it's sitting behind a video that has 1.2 million. But so 2.1 million views in 20 hours, and he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven videos with more views than that. So out of his 445 videos, his full blown Chad video, I'm dead honor and respect me already has more views than the the rest of all of his content, which is wild. Wild. Well, probably half of it is people sending it to other people to say, Hey, watch this who like, for example, I do not consume gun tube. That's not anything. I don't watch YouTube in general, but that's just not, anything that I've been interested in in any capacity. But I watched it today because you sent it to me and you asked me to. So half of the people who are watching it aren't necessarily even gun tubers. They're, they've been sent this to have perspective on life. Enjoy the last moments of your life. So you know how people make the, the comment, when somebody, for example, they say they're going to leave social media and they're like, or they're leaving a group or a page or whatever on social media. That sounds so dramatic. And they, they, they make the post like, oh, this place has changed. I'm leaving. People will make the joke. This is an airport. You don't have to announce your departure. Okay. Yeah. So how do you feel about the postmortem, like from beyond the grave post? I'm down for it. Totally down for it. Cool. It's a reminder to especially your loved ones, but really anybody who's willing to listen to you. It's a reminder to hug the people around you, enjoy while you're alive. So be alive while you are alive. So that brings up one of the points actually that I want to talk about, specifically regarding his channel's growth back in January and mm-hmm. prior, um, the community that came up around him and basically propped him up and said, follow this guy's content's amazing. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Watch his videos, consume his content, this and that. How frequently have you seen that happen when the circumstances are normal. I've literally never seen it because a, I'm not on YouTube. 
That's just on I'm, YouTube. No, I've literally never seen it okay. ever. So I I I can't comment so on I, it. So I I've only ever seen it a couple other times. There was a long long period of time where a YouTuber named PewDiePie who's from like Sweden or Norway or something like that. Okay. Um, That's an interesting name. Well, it it looks like Pew, it's P E W like shoot, die, pie. Oh, that's and he played, not what I was thinking at but all. But it's pronounced PewDiePie, so I don't know. Okay. I just I always assumed that it was like because he played video games and first person shooter is like, haha, I killed you. Now I'm gonna eat my pie. Like joking. I don't know. Okay. That's that's my take on his username. I don't know the guy, so I anyway. No so other. what about it? Um, people used to it'd be completely out of context. Somebody would be talking about on on any social media platform. They'd be talking about politics or whatever, and they're like, and subscribe to PewDiePie, and be like, okay, like I, I don't know what started that trend, but for a long time that was a thing. And he was he was way bigger than Mr. Beast back in the day before, and that's a whole thing now. Ever since that whole nonsense with him came up. Um, there's been more and more things surfacing, but that's not that's not what this video is about. Um, so people would just say, "Hey, here's my new car. By the way, go subscribe to PewDiePie." And it was so everywhere, random. everywhere. It was on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere that you turn. Does this PewDiePie person do videos? He just came back kind of recently, and I'm still subscribed to him from back then. So I have seen some of the videos and Cash has wanted Cash has wanted to watch some of them. Is it like hidden in the video? Like add this randomly? What? Like is he telling people to Oh, I don't know. You'd have to go back. Cause he he kind of he was in a race with some other channel for the longest time for the most subscribers. And then he got passed, and then Mr. Beast kind of took over against whatever that. There's a I think it's called. I've literally T-series. never heard of any of these people before I met Andrew, like including Mr. Beast. YouTube people you are. Have, you would have found out about him eventually. Dot dot dot. It's, it's it's everywhere. He's working on a project with Amazon right now, which is I'm sure you're going to see commercials and ads and everything for it. But um, again, YouTube people are dot dot dot. Uh, but outside of like the collabs, so the uh, the guys from Indiana, the Ballistic High Speed Channel, they kind of filled a void that Richard Ryan left, but from Black Rifle, because um, Richard Ryan used to do slow mo shooting content. Okay. And then he's just been too busy with all of his other projects and Black Rifle and stuff. But they've kind of so you have. The slow mo guys who've always done slow mo content and have been getting doing collaborations more and more with like Kentucky Ballistics. Okay. But then you have the ballistic high speed guys who just recently have like exploded. Okay. They collided two nine millimeter bullets and caught it in slow motion. So you could see exactly what happens. It took them forever to do it, but it's super cool. Um, but now they're like on Unsubscribes podcast. They're doing collabs with these people and these people and these people and these people. And that's how that's more or less the word of mouth within the content creator community Mm -hmm. is, you know, who saw your, what big channel saw your content or how many tens of thousands of commenters went and bombarded Brandon Herrera and said, Hey, you guys should do something with these guys because their content's really cool. And that's kind of how that journey begins for a lot of those people. So, I just kind of wonder. But can we just take a moment to realize that our lives should not come down to likes and clicks and subscribe? Like, it's too late for that. So, it's too late for that. It's so disgusting. It's too late for that. So disgusting to me. But yeah, carry on. That's, I mean, social credit scores and stuff like that are basically here. They're just not so called disgusting. That. And, I mean, I made that joke about subscription service for breathing, and I've seen all kinds of things, people talking similar sentiment, not those exact words, but saying, you know, I, I saw this video somebody shared 
can't remember who shared it was on Twitter and it was this chick and it was like something along the lines of something, something be different. Give her illegal fire unregistered firearms <laughs> instead of flowers or whatever else. And then the same girl was in a video like running or something like that. And she was like, uh, make sure, make sure you work out so that when this, this, and this happens and you get your 15 minutes outside the, the city that you can flash your boobs to get an extra minute of air or whatever. Okay. <laughs> There's, there are, um, tools and services and things like that where if you don't have a certain number of impressions, so not even necessarily like how many people follow you or like your content, but how many eyeballs does your content have? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a certain number of impressions, it doesn't matter how many followers or subscribers or whatever you have, they don't care. And then there's also like um, Bunker Branding mm -hmm. won't bring you on as a partner to do your merch if you don't have like a collective 1 million followers. That was something that they, like initially when they started that service, that's one of the things that he outlined was, at least, I met a, I think it was combined across all social media. So between Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, if you had a combined 1 million, they would work with you, but nobody below that, which... No small people allowed. Which, out of all the times that I've ever ordered stuff from a creator that uses bunker branding... It has taken weeks, if I even got it yeah, at all. Yeah, you literally said you ordered three shirts and had to cancel them because three weeks well, later they hadn't, to, even, they hadn't I, even yeah. shipped. Yeah, there was no communication or anything like that. So Same. why would you want to do business with them anyways if they're complete shit? Well, I, I order so infrequently that my assumption was, oh, maybe it was because that was the last time was near a holiday or whatever. But if every single time you have ordered, it's been a shit show. Yeah. So, yeah. The, last the few times I've ever had ever ordered stuff from Black Rifle and it's arrived incorrectly or misprint or the shirts cut oh. weird, they have always rectified it. Black Rifle is a much bigger company. Okay, that's fine. But I would rather pay an extra couple of dollars for a T-shirt and actually have it a arrive. Well, it's B, actually cheaper. Oh, okay. I'm just okay. Then it's you're making a yeah. You're not making a case for bunker branding. Right. So. So, anyways. The the whole thing. Uh, the whole re okay, I pulled up. Oops, yeah, I pulled up his channel, and I wanted to. I guess I'm in the yeah. I need to switch account. I wanted to just out of curiosity. So if I if I'm logged in the right account, I can see the uh, channel analytics. Let's see here. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you <laughs> if you look at his video views compared to ours. It basically makes ours look like a flat line. It oh, does. I'm sure. I mean, we do not have a million plus subscribers. So here's here's something weird though. All of our spikes correspond with spikes on his channel, meaning not that nothing like there wasn't obviously any collaboration, but clearly we share some sort of similar audience demographic that those people are consuming content around the same time from both. Well, you said we have like a 60% male viewership. So I would assume that it's even a higher percentage for his content. So in the last, so my guess is like 90 plus percent in the last 30 days. And today doesn't count in the last 30 days. This channel has had 607,000 views on seven videos. So then you had the 2.1 million since yesterday. Because that video came out 20 hours ago. So late last night is when that video came out. Is that when you watched it? I, I started watching it last night. And it's a then, short video. No, okay, I'm sorry. Somebody shared a clip on Twitter, and it wasn't the full video. So I started watching it. Gotcha. As I'm saying that is, I watched that clip. So can you answer why Pop-Tarts? 
Can I answer why pop? I have never watched that video. I've only seen the memes. What are the memes? Show me a, a pop tart meme pertaining to. There's he's on a uh, sand rail dune buggy. Okay. Something along is he those like lines. eating pop tarts while? Yeah, he's got like a pop tart box on the front tire. On the front tire. Yeah. And he's eating one. Paul Harrell pop tarts. He's got a bunch of shorts. Uh, Paul Harrell versus fake pop tarts. Fourteen thousand views. Apps except no substitutes is the short title. So I guess he just really likes pop tarts. Okay. Hey, a man likes what he likes. Every Paul Harrow Pop Tarts ad. He's got a, a bunch they, of them. Did they sponsor him? I don't know. Like I said, I've only I've only seen a few of his videos. Now I want to know what his favorite flavor was. It looks like the strawberry. That's the one that I keep saying. You want to hear something crazy, Andrew? What? I've never had a Pop-Tart in my life. Was it cinnamon brown sugar? Those are my favorite. Really? Yeah. That was the only thing my brother would eat for years growing up. Yeah, you've up. told this story so many times. On here? Yeah. And oh. this is the same brother who has issues with food and other things. What? No, no. Oh, Aaron. wrong brother? Yeah. Oh, no. sorry. I mixed up two of his brothers. No, Aaron's the one that... And Aaron is a big dessert person. That's who I thought you were talking about. Yeah. See, he, when, okay, Andrew is the oldest of four boys, mm -hmm. and he refers to everybody as his brother. So I'm just supposed to guess which brother. So excuse me for... Context clues. Mixing up... The brother who loves desserts, who would only eat Pop-Tarts, doesn't that logically make sense? But no, he was saying those two separate brothers. Yeah. But I was just supposed to know that by my brother. I don't know. I wasn't saying that you were supposed to know that. I was just telling the audience. I wasn't bringing, oh, no. bringing in names and stuff. Yeah, definitely. I was supposed to know. Yeah. Two but point. Yeah. Okay, he has a his video called Rebuttal. Okay, I bet you. There's some things I had to deal with. Recently, some people said and did some things that typically would fall into the category of I look at it for five or ten seconds, laugh, and then get on with my day. Okay, I'm not going to play that whole thing. When did that one come out? Four years, May 26, twenty twenty. And possibly is pertaining to this Caleb guy. Yeah, I really okay. I really want to know who the fuck he is. And I really hope that he issues an apology for like making this life so, a miserable that's hell another, for the last X amount of years. That's another point that I wanted to bring up about the yesterday's video, his I'm dead video. Okay. Um, I've never seen anything negative about Paul at all. I mean, but you, to be fair, you also only said that you recently started subscribing to him just in the last couple of months when there was a huge push to get him to a million. Right. So if this rebuttal video came out four years ago, you weren't a follower then. Right. So. Um, Paul Harrell calls out Caleb as denigrator in final video. It's some website called The Direct. Uh, Maybe they'll say who Caleb is. Caleb called Harold uninformed in his firearms demos and put his character into question, accusing the YouTuber of spreading hate, something, something. It just, it trails off. Um, it's very um, ironic. Somebody okay. who's saying thread. hateful things is saying that the other person is S spreading hate. The subreddit of the first Reddit post is from the subreddit liberal gun owners. So. Okay. I'm scared now. A couple weeks ago, Kayla posted a video about Paul Harrell. It is a link to YouTube. Let's check. When was that posted? Video isn't available anymore. No, the, the Reddit comment. Four years ago. But the, I just clicked on the link and YouTube said video isn't available anymore. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm going to keep that tab open because um, by the video, to watch the video actual code at the end, mm -hmm. I could probably figure out when it went up and when it was deleted. Mm -hmm. uh, today, Caleb posted a video in which he doubles down. Okay. And this, it starts trying to play it. I think these are privated, not actually deleted. Mm -hmm. The play screen comes up and then it redirects. So, yeah. And what does privated video on YouTube mean, Andrew? It's the video still exists, and one of two things can happen. Only you, the uploader, can see it. Okay. Um, or you can share a link. So typically, um, use cases that are usual for that are videos that they don't want to lose. Their the, viewership, their yeah, likes, yeah, their subscribe, yeah. whatever. Or um, Mark Rubber does this. When... The uh, boxes mm -hmm. when for like the things he doesn't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't publish those videos publicly. Right, right. Because you have to be a subscriber yeah. to so the you, boxes. So you and scan so you a get Q, the yeah, like. Or yeah, the you link, scan yeah. a QR code, takes you to the video, so you can watch gotcha. and whatever. So there, I mean, there's which is obviously that's not the case in this. Right. Yeah, just keep saying Caleb, 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 Caleb. But he doesn't have a real full name. Um, Caleb. 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 <laughs> okay, Caleb. Uh, they said Gun Nuts Media, but I don't know if that's supposed to be the channel or if that's like th they put it in all caps, meaning that it could be like a channel, but that could also be because this is liberal gun owners. <laughs> They're just saying Gun Nuts Media, as in gun tubers. Uh, Caleb's response was pathetic. Caleb's response, blah, blah, blah. Blame Paul for YouTube comments being malicious. Caleb is a shit bird. Um, my conclusion is that gun not and drunken moron. Hold on, this is another YouTube link because this is a different video. Pro Arms Videos episode 37. <laughs> When is, oh, 14 years ago. Is this supposed to be Caleb? Comments are turned off on whatever this is. Uh, Proms podcast was live from 20, 2008 to 2017. Sadly, the podcast is no more. This is description from their own channel. This isn't. Um, Gail Pepin underscore Pro Arms podcast. It doesn't, there's no. I don't see any Caleb. So yeah, I don't. So if you guys know, let us know. Ah, Caleb Giddings. Who's Caleb Giddings? And yeah, there's Paul's the rebuttal video. And then the video underneath it on this forum says video unavailable. So when it says video unavailable, I believe I, I've tr I tried this experiment before because I wanted to see the difference between actually deleting and privating a video. Mm -hmm. And I believe when it only says video is unavailable, it's privated. If it's been deleted, it explicitly says deleted. So the video still exists. Gotcha. And if you know the channel and all that good stuff, you could potentially find it. Let's see. Okay, now I gotta find. So they say gun nuts on here as well. So apparently that is what it's called. Caleb. Gun nuts. Giddings. He's a blogger. No, this is not the person I thought it was. There's this is this is a totally different person, but here's this is what he looks like. Okay. Yeah, I would have never. I would have never found this his Instagram handle is Radic Caleb like Radical Caleb combined cute so cute yeah other than that I don't know I think Caleb Giddings is a competitive shooter and blogger uh, founder of Gun Nuts Media website and blog among competitive shooters okay so he's like he's probably extremely pretentious whereas Paul is like the the couple of videos that I did see were like this is what you should buy and here's what you should get if you're on a budget. There's nothing like 
with with few exceptions when he's actually testing like high tech stuff or cool guy stuff as we like to call it um he's like if you walk into your walmart and you're on a budget gotcha and these are your options here's why i'd buy a so he's the every man whereas yeah, yeah. this guy is yeah. trying to be the uppity man this guy's running like you know skeletonized firearms and premium you know metals and things like that so they're the weight distribution's perfect and you start getting into like stuff that we have from hellfire right where it's expensive for the sake of just being expensive no 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 there's a very there's a very very um specific reason for some of those things for like a, a three gun shooter for example right they want a lot of uh, weight taken out, but they don't want too much weight taken out that they have a lot of felt recoil because they want their, their follow on shots to be consistent. So you still need some weight, but there's areas where you can do weight reduction, stuff like that costs money. So for the purpose of being a competitive shooter, that makes sense for the person keeping something on their nightstand for when the boogeyman comes completely unnecessary. So there's been a lot of uh, back and forth about shotguns over the years. It's okay. There are these patterns and it's not, I'm looking at the time real quick. Um, Not just in the gun community, but just like in general where, you know, the trend is everybody hates this and then everybody hates or loves it and then likes it and whatever, like they're back and forth. So for a long time, Everybody was like, oh, shotguns are great. And then it turned to, you shouldn't own a shotgun. You should just get a pistol because you don't want your barrel sticking out. You don't want this. And you don't want that. And then now it's come back around where everybody likes shotguns again for home defense. It's flippy floppy, flippy floppy, back you and forth. You gave yours to your aunt. I bet she's never even picked it up. Um, Who knows? I mean, Micah's there now, so right. maybe again, he's taking I- her. But she's never picked it up. Maybe. I don't know. She, my, for reference, my uncle passed away two, three years ago. Three years wow. ago. It's been a long time already. Um, And she was. Living alone. Yeah. Well, not just living alone, but the area in which he, they retired to um, is kind of isolated. I mean, she has neighbors, but. She also really doesn't. Mm. And so just to make her feel safer, if for no other reason, you know, you have it at least rather than not having anything. Um, but now she's not alone. No. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where Micah and Anna plan on going after the dust settles from his retirement from the Air Force. But we'll see. I'm sure they're not going to leave the area. He didn't move to North Carolina to leave North Carolina right. again. So, um, yeah, I, the, he just, everything about this guy just looks pretentious. Everybody that's talked about him basically doesn't like him. He really doesn't even have that many followers on Instagram. I was 8,600 or 8,300 followers on well, Instagram. Isn't it true that, the people who are most unhappy are the ones who take it out on everyone else. Sure. The, I, I don't know uh, Paul's history, but I believe he's a veteran as well. But again, comes back to everything. The trends are changing all the time. Tactics are changing all the time. There's people that are mad I see people that I respect. They're like, oh, you're still doing that thing that we were taught in the 90s and we don't do that anymore. Who cares, man? For the most part, the way that you hold the barrel on your rifle is not going to impact the common homeowner that's you know, in self-defense mode. You're doing CQB, you're clearing houses or whatever, you're deployed, you're in the military and you're trying to you know, be precise and stuff. Sure. Your tactics and training and stuff like that matters. But the most important thing for 
a homeowner and their safety is just fundamental understanding of the weapon or whatever they're using, going to the range, practicing, understanding the feel, the recoil, how to load it, fundamental stuff, right? Like other than for for the most part, people purchase their self-defense, home defense items. I won't even call weapons because I mean, not all the time is a weapon Um, based on completely subjective look and feel. Well, now I need to know what other items you would possibly purchase other than. Well, some things are sold as something else. For example, brass knuckles are sold as paperweights or belt buckles. That's, that's how you get around the legal loophole of owning brass knuckles is it's a belt buckle or it's a paperweight. Okay. That's, it was the same thing, uh, in the gentleman in the movie. I mean, but he was in Europe, but he had a paperweight. Mm -hmm. It was a paperweight. Even though I believe in that situation, it has to be non-functional maybe or plugged. Who knows? But moral of the story is, um, it'd be nice if content creators and people would support each other more. And I get it. There are, you, you run into instances where, you don't want to promote or support somebody before you really know a lot about them. Cause you might see something in the first couple months, be like, dude, this guy's really cool. He's original, great content. Well, before he got into Caleb and the character assassination, he said something about pirating videos. So he was saying, because all the stuff is going to end up on TikTok, and people are going to, people are going to rip the videos down. They're going to republish it. It's going to be a nightmare for them to try and DMCA and take down and copyright strike mm-hmm. and everything else like that. Um, our videos are all uh, licensed under the Creative Commons Fair Use license, meaning anybody can actually take our content. They just have to. Now you just gave everybody a good idea. Why? That's some people license their content um, under what they call the standard license, or they might have other licensing things, which is. The copyright owner fully owns everything unless they grant you a written exception. Anybody can take our content, repurpose it, tweak it, whatever, and publish it, but they have to give us credit. That's the main thing. So his content, I'm sure if I go to one of his videos, where's he at? Okay. I think it tells you in the description usually or used to. It actually does not... Game on with transcript, channel, show less. Yeah, so it doesn't tell you in the description. Um, but ours, so I'm assuming his is the the standard license, which is the default for anything unless you change it. Gotcha. Um, because ours is a comedy podcast and we want people to clip the content. We haven't been doing it. nearly enough comedy to call it a comedy podcast. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have. There's many different, I would love. There's many different flavors That's of That's what comedy. he promised me, by the way, when he roped me into doing a podcast with him, that it was going to be talking about our life and it was going to be comedic relief. And I feel like it has turned into a news expose. And no, we're not the news. You can't say that word. An expose on topics that are trending and there what, is not that's, nearly that's what the algorithm enough wants. comedy. That's what the algorithm wants. So we have to give them what they want or give it what it wants. But you should also deliver in what you promised me. You can't do that until the audience is there. <sighs> We've had this discussion a million times. We can't do what we want to do until the audience is there and will come with us on that journey. Right, but don't say one thing and then not I, do I, it. I didn't say one thing. I'm doing what the algorithm wants. That's how everybody has to grow. <sighs> so, with that being said, if anybody would like to do a collab with us, let me know. Besides bunker branding, since apparently we're completely out of the running on that one for not having a million. No, no, no. That's 
that's for printing your merch and doing your merch distribution. We already have that figured out. I don't need a company like that to do it anyways. And I don't know what their deal, like, I don't know. I know they use Shopify, so I don't know what sort of cut, you know, if they say, oh, we're going to, if we print and ship and handle logistics and everything, we get X amount. I have no idea because I've never seen any of those contracts. I've also never seen any creator leave. So I believe that the creators that use them like it. I don't know. I don't have any any negative insight. Do you think that it's possible that it's specific to you because of your sizing and double XL is not a standard size? Or no, even triple XL? No, because they do a lot of their stuff is print on demand. And they right. don't they're doing But I would say size large is probably the standard men shirt. And so they probably have No, they just have they have too many SKUs and too many customers. So if if they want to uh if they want to screen print, for example, right? They have to they they already have the screens, but they're gonna want to prioritize doing a lot because the the actual the screen doesn't change. The I size know. of the shirt that goes on there does. I know. So if I'm the only person ordering whatever shirt, the shirts that I ordered were from unsubscribe. Mm -hmm. So if I'm the only person that's ordering those shirts, but there's, you know, a run on the one that the, uh, what's his name that tried to shoot Trump because he was wearing a bunker branding shirt. So I'm sure they had a run on those shirts. People trying to buy it to be like, oh, I have the shirt that the. Damn. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. So there there could be a million different reasons. Um, I think the last good experience I had was when I bought those pink shorts. I shouldn't say good. The last fast experience. I've never had a bad experience. I've just either not had. You're saying from 2020 or yeah. 2019 2020 2020 yeah was the last good experience that you had ordering from bunker branding no I, i've changed my what i said i wasn't saying good or bad just reasonable timeline like i ordered them in late june and i got them before fourth of july which is was my expectation okay that was it that's not good. But anyways. I also haven't... What's the last time I ordered from... I have that... I have the Fat Electrician Christmas sweater. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how long that took. A while. But I, I think you order from them twice a year. Mm, I can't remember the last time I ordered other than those two things. Mm. Name something else that I have. Well... Are fat electrician shirts not printed through them? Well, I'm sure because they probably didn't print it. They probably had to outsource it or something. They're not going to do something that niche in house. They're not going to order custom equipment because they were they they were also trying to do. They had their own like custom fitness brand for a while that they named after their son. Okay. Um, and then that didn't do well or they couldn't keep up something. I can't remember. He made a video about it. Mm. Um, I've never ordered any of it, but all of that stuff, they were like outsourcing the materials. They would, you know, contract a company wherever, say, here's our specs. This is what we want. And they bring it in, try it on, model it, whatever, figure out if they like it, wear it for a little, like the complete testing, right? right, right. Does it hold up? If I wear it every other day and wash it every other day, does it, it does it hold up to that? They were doing all that kind of stuff. They had his wife had like those racks in her office and he would show up periodically and he's like, he's, here's all the new things that we're testing. And then a year or so ago, they just canceled that whole line. It was just too time consuming. And, um, I don't think they had a good enough return on it, but I'm, I think something like that, that's a limited run. They're probably outsourcing that they I'm, I'm certain that they don't have, a sweater knitting machine in house. I didn't say sweater. I was talking about 
the other fat electrician shirts that you've ordered. Oh, I think I got those all at the same time. But yeah, they, he prints and ships those from there. That's exactly what I asked. And oh. you went on a whole tangent well, I, about... I had talked about the sweater, and so I thought you were talking about the sweater. No. He's re, he's changed that design since then. I have like the OG shirt. <laughs> the, he wears it on his own show periodically, and it's different. The colors are different. So... Anyways. Um, that's all from us. Rest in peace, Paul. And uh, we'll live every day like out, it's your last. Yep, check out the uh, new content as it comes out. If you guys haven't seen the video that we're talking about, um, he apologizes for dying, which is a different concept. I'm not going to apologize for dying. Think he that, f- that wasn't my takeaway from the video. I I think he genuinely felt guilty for failing his friends and family and audience. That was not my takeaway at all. Okay. My takeaway was I love you all and thank you for allowing me to be a part of your lives. His brother shared, going back to this real quick, his brother shared that... Um, he died like the last thing everybody had said to him was that they loved him and cared about him and all that stuff. Um, but he was wearing like his boots and everything that he always wears. It's like comfort familiarity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sucks. With that said, thank you for watching. Go check out, Paul's channel and his videos go subscribe, pump it up for his family and friends that are going to continue on his legacy on his channel. All right. Goodbye. Bye.